What is going down guys, I'm back with another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to design and make the basis for a professional looking uh, web page in a matter of minutes using HTML and CSS for the styling. So without further ado, let's get straight to it. Um, so first of all, you need to open up your favourite text editor, mine Sublime Text 2, and you need to create a new document. Then in your untitled file, um, you need to start off by creating the bare bones of your HTML document. So we've opened the HTML tag, open the head tag, open the title tag, and we're going to give it the title of my first um, web page. And close the title tag, close the head tag, um, open the body tag, close the body tag, and finally close off the HTML tag. Um, just leave a space between the body tag, because that's where we're going to be putting the content of our web page. Um, right, and then we can file, save. And I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop, and I'm going to call it uh, my first web page. Okay. <clears throat> so then, uh, double click inside this folder, and in here, I'm going to save this file as index.html. Okay. Um, so back in our HTML document. I'm going to add in underneath the title tag a link tag, link rel equals style sheet, href equals css slash style.css, and close off the link tag. Style.css is going to be the name of my CSS uh, file, and it's going to be placed in the CSS folder. Um, so now within the body tags, um, I'm going to create a div class equals header, and close off the div tag. I'm going to do the same for nav underscore bar, this is the navigation bar, if you haven't guessed already. Um, I'm then going to create another div class, and this one's going to be the main container. So this is going to be the main content of the site. I'm going to create another div class then, um, one final one, called footer. Okay, so this is where we're going to put the content of our site. It's always best to style it in um, divs. It's easier to style um, using CSS, and it's more professional than using tables. So inside our header div, we're going to create two h1 we're going to create h1 tag and close it off and inside of here this is going to be our heading our title for our web page and i'm just going to call it my website you can call it whatever you want obviously then inside the navbar div i'm going to create a link tag which is a href equals and then two double quotes and don't forget to close the link tag off and for the href the link is going to be index.html and I want the link to say home because this is going to be the home button on the navigation bar. Copy and paste this um, however many times you want for however many links you want. And you can name these whatever you want. You can create your own links and links to your own web pages or websites externally or internally. Um, but I'm going to have an about page, a gallery page, um, a feedback page, and a contact page. Those are the five buttons on my navigation bar um, that I'm going to include. Um, and so then we're going to go down into the main container div and this is our main content. So we're going to start off by just putting a h2 tag similar to the h1 but h2. This is a slightly smaller heading um, than a h1. Um, and we're going to create a paragraph tag underneath that and close it off. For the header um, subheading, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to put welcome. And for the, my for the first paragraph, I'm just going to put welcome to my website. I hope you find this website useful. Uh, and a nice little cheeky smiley face in the end there. Um, so we've added some content, a header and a paragraph. Then in the footer div, we're going to add the copyright information for the web page. Um, the HTML code for a copyright symbol is the and sign, and then copy with a semicolon, um, and that basically will create you a copyright symbol. So it's going to be copyright 2016 Joe Drake at Web Tutorials. Again, you can put it whatever you want. Um, you can have it say whatever you want in the copyright in your footer div. It's entirely up to you at the bottom of the page. File, save, um, and then we're going to open this um, in our favorite browser. Um, and view what the web page looks like so far without any styling. Uh, just find the folder. There we are, my first web page. 
index.html, double click, and it opens up in your favourite browser. And you can see we've got the heading, my website, that's the title. We've got our navigation bar with our five links. We've got our subheading, welcome. And then we've got our first paragraph, welcome to my website. Hope you find this website useful with a smiley face. And in the footer, we've got copyright 2016, Joe Drake at Web Tutorials. And that's going to be, um, that's just some nice basic content and information uh, for your first ever web page. And obviously you can develop this and put whatever you want as the content. So now we're going to create a new file and we're going to save this straight away. In our folder, we're going to create a new folder called CSS. Remember I said I was going to put my CSS file in a folder called CSS. So I'm going to create a CSS folder. Um, and then in here, we're going to name the file style.css, which is again um, what I referred to here. Style.css slash style.css in my link tag. So in the CSS file, we're going to, we are going to be targeting the body. Um, the header, um, the navbar, uh, sorry, h1, um, the navbar, nav underscore bar, um, navbar a, which is the link tag within the navbar, the navbar a colon hover, which is the hover state of the link tag, when you hover over a link, um, the uh, main container, main underscore container, h2 tag, um, the paragraph tag, p tag, we're going to be targeting the footer as well, finally. Um, you'll notice that when we're just targeting a tag, a html tag, we don't need a dot in front of the name of the tag, um, but when it's a div, it's a dot in front of the name. That's just how we target in CSS. So in the body tag now we're going to add a background of hash EF 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 which is a really light grey close to white. We're going to add a margin of zero auto um, and a font family of Arial. So the body um, the body affects the entire document. So if we set a font family to Arial the entire documents uh, font family will become Arial, not just a specific tag or a specific HTML element, the entire document, um, because that's basically targeting the body tag. So when we file and save and open it in our favourite browser, you will see that the background colour has changed, the font family has changed, um, and the margin around the edges has been removed with the margin zero auto attribute. So then in the header, um, we're going to add margin auto, uh, margin top of 30 pixels. So there's a little margin of 30 pixels at the top um, of the page. A width of 900 pixels. We'll add a border of one pixel solid and black, hash six zeros. We're going to add a background of hash CCC CCC, which is a fairly light gray. File, save, and when, we, and when we're refreshing the browser, You'll see that the margin auto has moved the content, that whole div, into the centre of the page. You'll see um, that there's a border now around the div and things like that. Um, and the background's changed and things. Now we're going to add a padding of 20 pixels. And by doing so, we need to change the width to 860. Um, because we want the entire width to be 900 and 860 plus 20 on the left, plus 20 on the right equals 900 pixels when we refresh in the browser, you will see that 20 pixels padding has been added around the content inside the header div. Um, and this just makes it look more professional. Um, we're going to also add a text align of center. Um, and this will basically centrally align the content. So my website will be centrally aligned in the center of that div. So now it's in the centre, and it's looking more like a, a professional heading now on a website. So that's looking nice. So the next thing we need to target and style is the H1 tag, which is the actual content itself. Um, and we're just going to give it a font size of 30 pixels, and this should just reduce the font size 
the default font size of a H1 tag by about two pixels. Just want to refresh. You'll see that my website has now been reduced slightly. And you can make this whatever size you want. Um, be adventurous, you know, experiment a little bit and whatever you find more comfortable. Um, so now when we're going to target the nav bar and in here we're going to add a margin of auto to again centrally align the whole div in the centre of the page. We're going to add a width of 860 pixels and a padding again, um, this time of 5 pixels by 20 pixels by 5 pixels by 20 pixels. This basically means that the top is going to be 5, um, the right is going to be 20, the bottom is going to be 5 and the left is going to be 20. We're going to add a border of 1 pixel solid and black again, so black 1 pixel solid border. We're going to add a background of black this time. So file, save, and when we refresh in the browser, you'll see that the navbar has now been centrally aligned in the middle of the page. Um, it's black border, uh, black background, etc. But there's clearly more styling that needs to be done here. Um, so now we're going to add in um, a colour of white, FFF, FFF, and this will mean that the text colour becomes white. So any standard text within that div will be white to contrast nicely with the black background. We're also going to add a text align of centre, um, just like with the header div. And we're also going to add a font size of 20 pixels to make that text a little bit bigger. And we're going to add a font weight of bold, and this will make the text bold, basically. So when we file, save and refresh in the browser, you'll see now that the links have now been centred in the middle of the navigation bar. Uh, the font uh, size has increased and the font weight has also increased and it's looking more professional. Now we can add in here um, word spacing, word dash, dash spacing um, of 40 pixels. So when we file and save and refresh in the browser, you'll see that now each of the links, each of the words, has a space in between them of 40 pixels between each one so that they're nicely spaced out and not too clumped together and it looks more professional. Now we're going to target the link inside the navbar, navbar A, and we're going to add a colour of FFF, FFF, which is white to contrast against the black, and we're going to add a text decoration of none. So file, save, refresh in the browser, and you'll see now that the links have become white and the underline. Um, has disappeared. So it's looking a lot nicer now. Now in the hover state for the link we're going to also add a colour of FFF FFF which is white so the colour is not going to change when we hover over it but the text decoration is now going to be underlined. Underline. So file, save and refresh in the browser and now you will see that when we hover over one of the links, any one of the links, um, it becomes underlined to let the user know that they are currently hovering over in a particular link and which link that they are hovering over. It's like a little user aid um, to help the user out. And it's looking a lot more professional now. So that's it for the navigation bar. So now we're going to target the main container div. We're going to add a margin of auto to centrally align the div in the middle of the web page. We're going to add a width again of 860 pixels and a padding of 20 pixels. We're going to add a background of white and we're going to add a border of a solid border of one pixels and black, black solid one pixel border. Um, uh, we're going to add a min height of 500 pixels and this will mean that the minimum height of that div will be 500 pixels. It can be extended the more content is added but it will never be less than 500 pixels. So when we when we refresh in the browser, you will see that the main container is now white. It's got a border, and it's a minimum height of 500 pixels. And this can be extended. The more content is in there, and if it exceeds 500, it will happily exceed 500 pixels automatically. But it will never go less than 500. Um, so now it's just important to note just quickly about the padding. If I set the padding to 20 pixels, that means the top, bottom, left and right padding of the div will become 20 pixels each. Uh, but if I wanted to add a different padding to the top, bottom, left and right, a good a good rule of thumb is north, east, south, west as you're doing it. So 20 pixels, 5 pixels, 6 pixels and 15 pixels, that would be north, east, south, west. So the top, right, 
bottom left. Um, so now I've just added a font size in here um, of 18 pixels for the H2 tag and a font size of 14 pixels for the paragraph tag just to reduce those sizes slightly and make it look um, a little bit nicer, the content there. Um, so yeah, so now we're going to edit the footer. And in here, in the, in, in the footer, we're going to add a margin of auto to again centrally align the footer. We're going to add a width of 860 pixels again, a padding of 20 pixels because we want the top, bottom, left and right padding of the div to all be 20. We want to add a background of white, um, a border of one pixel solid black. Um, sorry, I forgot the F there on the uh, the background colour. Um, yeah, so that's it. File, save and we'll go back to the browser, refresh. And you will see now when we go to the bottom of the page that we have styled our footer and it's looking a lot nicer now. Um, but there's a little bit more I want to do regarding the border and things. Um, so we're going to add in here, uh, first of all we're going to add in a font size of 14 pixels to reduce the size of uh, the text within the footer. We're going to add a margin bottom of 30 pixels. Um, and we're doing that because if we go back up to the head, the header styling, you'll see we've added a margin top of 30 pixels. So now that we've added a margin bottom below the foot of 30 pixels, when we refresh in the browser, you will see that at the bottom we have a nice 30 pixel margin um, between the bottom of the page and the footer. So there's a nice little bit of space there. And at the top, we also have um, 30 pixels, just so that it's... Uh, just so that you know it matches the top with the bottom just underneath the border here of one pixel solid we're going to add in a border dash top of one pixel dashed this time not solid dashed of hash 777777 and this is like a light gray medium gray um, and this will mean that the uh, the top of the border the whole border will be one pixel solid black, but just the top of that uh, footer border, as you can see when we refresh in the browser, is dashed and is a light grey. It's a bit difficult to see at the moment because what we need to do is, um, in the main container styling, is we need to change the border dash bottom to none. Okay, um, and we also need a border dash top none as well. Um, file save. So when we go back to the browser and we refresh, um, you can now see that the main container's bottom border has disappeared, because um, it's now equal to none, and you can now clearly see that the uh, footer's top border is uh, dashed, and it's a light grey. Um, so back to the CSS then now, um, and in here we now... Uh, I think, I think that's about everything, actually, now. Um, I think we're just about done. Yeah. Um, so now, just to show you um, how you can add more content, if you wished, um, in the main container. Um, we can put another paragraph tag in here and close the paragraph tag off. And in here, we can put, um, this is another paragraph. Um, and we can add another paragraph in, um, another and another dot dot dot. Um, so file and save, and then if we go back to our browser and press refresh, you can see that more content's been added, more paragraphs have been added, um, and you can add as much content as you want in here. Um, you can add more subheadings in, more headings, you can even add links in here, and you can style it all in the CSS file. Um, you can also add images as well. Um, you can go check out my other video, how to insert an image using HTML and CSS, and you can also embed videos and other content like that as well. Um, so now you can see it's beginning to look more like a professional website, and you just continue doing the same thing, adding more features, adding more styling. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial guys, don't forget to subscribe to be notified when I upload new videos, 
more web tutorials are coming very shortly. Um, bye guys.